The year 1933 was the worst year of the Wall Street crash, with unemployment peaking at 25.2%, or in another perspective, one in four people were unemployed. This astonishing figure was to be cured by President Franklin Roosevelt of the United States by announcing the implementation of four million new public work jobs. Still, tens of thousands of Americans were going around looking for work, while others were historically involved with the construction of the Golden Gate Bridges in San Francisco. But the year of 1933 should be marked by one historic event, Hitler becoming Chancellor of Germany. This turned a swift change in events in Germany as it had been suffering from high unemployment figures, hyperinflation, and hopelessness in the German consumption market. The purpose of this documentary is to give an insight into German economy in the period between 1931 and 1939 and to investigate and answer the question, was the Nazi German economy one that was successful and one that should be modeled? Was it an economy for the future? Mr. Steinkarten, what were the results of the Wall Street crash on German economy? Well. The Wall Street crash on October the 23rd, 1929, resulted in absolute financial ruin for most Western nations, and Germany was no exception. The main impact that it had economically was a tremendous increase in unemployment figures, which had already been high since the hyperinflation of the mid-1920s. And although official figures from the time say that unemployment was around 6 million in Germany, e Recent historical estimates place the figure at 11 million. Another significant impact was that the Americans stopped, stopped all loans to Germany and demanded reparations, which completely destroyed any chance of recovery the German economy might have had. And that did definitely lay the groundwork for Hitler's eventual political success as he saw an opportunity to propose an economic miracle to the German people, some sort of recovery along with his nationalistic programs. It's also important to note, however, that Hitler was very... he had very little knowledge of economics. Also, also damals da, da war das so. Wir haben zusammen gewohnt, ähm, so vier, fünf oder sechs Leute in, in einem Zimmer. Ja, und also da waren wir vielleicht ein Mo, seine Frau, der Kinder mh, und Connor hat das Geld verdient, verstehen Sie? Wir waren verzweifelt. Nachher, da ging es dann aufwärts und wir haben Geld verdient. Für die Deutsch haben, haben nach Arbeit gesucht, äh, nach der damischen Hyperinflation. Ich kann mich erinnern an die, an die Zeit, äh, als ich noch, noch da drin war. Da, äh, da muss man Wagen voller Geldschirm, nur um ein Brot zu kaufen. Kann sich das vorstellen? Da muss man einen Weg finden, um leben zu können. Hitler konnte die Menschenmassen in seinen Band ziehen. Direkt nachdem Hitler an die Macht gekommen ist, war es eine seiner ersten Aktionen, einen Reichsarbeitsdienst einzurichten. Dieser Reichsarbeitsdienst war eine Organisation, die Männern Arbeit in öffentlichen Arbeitsprogrammen anbot. Dies beinhaltete das Bauen von Schulen, Krankenhäusern und ein Netzwerk von Schnellstraßen, die Autobahn. Ja, wir mussten in speziellen Arbeitslagern arbeiten und Militäruniformen tragen. Es gab zwar kostenlose Mahlzeiten, aber nur Taschengeld, keine Arbeitslöhne. Allerdings war der Reichsarbeitsdienst besser als das Leben ohne jegliche Arbeit. One project which had a huge impact on the figure of unemployment in the early years of Nazi Germany was the construction of the Autobahn highway system. Just days after the 1933 Nazi takeover, Adolf Hitler enthusiastically embraced an ambitious Autobahn construction project and appointed Fritz Todt as the Inspector General of German World Construction. Soon, this meant that over 100,000 laborers worked at construction sites all over Germany. This also provided employment and improved infrastructure for necessary uh, economic recovery efforts. The project was ultimately a great success for propaganda purposes.
The best possible way to bring the Germans back into work is to set German economic life once more in motion through great monumental works. This is not merely the hour in which we begin the building of the greatest network of roads in the world. This hour is at the same time a milestone on the road towards the building up of the community of the German people. This is Steinkarten. So the Autobahn project was successful, and Hitler managed to get a drastic reduction in unemployment, which was one of his chief promises during the electoral campaign before the elections of March 1933. Was this, though, a significant economic achievement? Technically, yes. Hitler did manage to drastically reduce unemployment figures in post-1933. And he did achieve something close to full employment, with the unemployment figure falling to only 300 or 2,000 by early 1939. But if we examine more closely how he achieved this, there are some significant problems. These include that many women and Jews were removed from their jobs in order to provide places for unemployed men to work. And these women and Jews were not counted in the unemployment figures. Another factor that matters is the enforcement of conscription, which created an army of 1.4 million, with only one of 100,000 technically allowed by the Versailles Treaty. And abnormally, according to the laws of economics, more workers in place means higher production. And from there the creation of further new jobs. But this job creation program that Hitler initiated by the removal of women and Jews and frozen wages in many public sector works such as the Autobahn were in a sense artificial. Hitler did not create real jobs and in a sense did not solve the problems of the German economy in the long run. His only real goal was rearmament, not genuine, meaningful, long-term economic recovery. Early in his political career, Adolf Hitler regarded economic